Hey Man Cave in, this is Bob from the Bob Zenscale Man Cave and today is part 6 of how I'm building my Helix Mountain. And in this episode we're talking about water. Well, water Bob, didn't you just do a waterfall? That was water. It's like, yeah, that was part 5. But this one is, where's that water going? It's got to go somewhere, it can't just evaporate when it hits the bottom of the waterfall. Uh, there's a lot of water there. It's got to go flow somewhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm finishing off the seam. The door's got to be able to close. I don't want a huge gap underneath the door so that it looks like it's a door. And I, I kind of want to make it look like it's all uh, seamless so that you don't see the crack underneath the bottom, even though you will for the most part. It just won't stand out at you when you first see it. And so this episode is going to be about how I'm hiding the sides and making sure everything kind of fits in correctly with the rest of the scene. But specifically the waterfall portion and getting that scene finished. So uh, what I got to do is I got I to do a lot of stuff. I got to cut some foam. I got to make things fit in where they need to fit in. And... Also, what is it going to look like eventually when I open the door? How am I going to finish the inside of that helix to make it look uh, enjoyable to look at when the door is open instead of just looking at plywood? You know, that's just no fun. So I've got to have some sort of way of uh, doing that. And that, that's going to be probably the final end project when I'm done. But i got to prepare it for when... I do finish that off. So, got some painting to do, got some, oh, sealing up the styrofoam so things don't leak. I gotta pour some water in, I gotta paint the bottom, I gotta put all sorts of stuff in there that you probably see on a lot of nice layouts and make the scene jump out and look a lot more um, realistic. Not prototypical, but realistic in my imaginary world. So let's go uh, take a look at my first few steps. Yeah, the first thing that I had to do was put in some foam. I had to make the scene start off with some sort of base. And so I filled in that crack area with some foam. And I got to put in some foam right in front of that, kind of a, like a terrace, and fill in the space underneath the door. Now that's this area is where the water is going to be uh, created for a stream and so I carved out a piece of foam made it fit put an extra piece of foam up here on the top so that uh, it filled in whatever gap was underneath there and you know the things not completely flat on the bottom so I kinda had to do it that way and then I took some uh, popsicle sticks glued them together and wedged them underneath the, the foam to keep it from falling down too much. Keep it in place until I get plaster on it. Now that I got it in position where I want it to uh, easily open and close and it gets a little tight right there but that's fine. It keeps it from swinging open on its own. Now I cut out the base that was already there and underneath the track so I can put in a bridge. I made uh, some more cuts in there so I could get a good bridge in and then I put in a base underneath in between uh, the, the framing and I put in that bridge. I like the bridge but the bridge is going to uh, get in the way of this door opening so I'm going to have to change that to something else but I want the water to flow under a bridge. And as you can see I changed it to this bridge. I had to widen it up a little bit. I Because of that I had to lower the riverbed another half inch so it would look like water is going underneath it and uh, had some height to it and then also carved in some area for a waterfall and some erosion I got some more carving obviously to do there but it's uh, looking pretty good it's going to flow all the way over to the side and imaginary go over the edge using this Gorilla wood glue I uh, glued the panels together in this base um, and then I'm ready for plaster. So, 
using the carving plaster and also uh, this uh, realistic water and water effects. All this stuff is from Woodland Scenics. Uh, even the yellow silt, it's a sealer and paint and the hunter green as well. We'll seal it up and get it ready for the realistic water. Um, use the yellow silt for around the edges and the hunter green for the center for deeper parts. Using the realistic water I'm just going to fill it in use some water effects for waterfalls and so forth. Now I use the carving plaster because uh, it would be easy to work with and I could probably carve stuff out if I need to and break pieces off. But I use a two to one mixture so it was nice and uh, wet but it would dry relatively uh, even and it was easy to, a lot easier to work with and didn't dry up in the bucket like if you do it uh, at a two and a half to one could be a little bit tight. So I just spread it all over the place, filled in as much of uh, the area I could so that it doesn't leak when I pour water, realistic water in there. And as you can see, uh, I put it all over the place. And I probably shouldn't have put it up here on the top where the door closes on it because it actually raised up the space and made it even tighter. So I had to break out all that plaster and uh, just get rid of it really and just paint it over the top of it later but it's going to be uh, finished off later so I started to paint just using regular household paints that I had uh, this seemed to be a little bit too dark of a brown uh, for dirt and so I ended up covering that up with other paint and did, did a few uh, redos of paint here now let's go with the yellow silt and uh, just painted the whole edges around there around the shores lines and then I went in with the hunter green and painted in the, the middle so it gives some depth. And then I came through and painted underneath the waterfall area here to kind of fill in all this uh, extra stuff there make it look a little more together. So there, there's been a lot of paint changes in there and I painted all the way up into the, near the track and so forth. You know, just got to make it look somewhat realistic. And then took a Q-tip and some black paint and just kind of dabbed in some uh, really dark or really deep areas and or get some shadow or some sort of thing in there and then glued in some sticks and, you know gonna have to put in some uh, uh, talus along this wall, the along the shorelines and I even took some of the talus and broke it up with a hammer and uh, make some smaller pieces or you can buy some fine bat that ballast and use that in between all the rocks kind of fill in uh, all that dead space that's in there and uh, you know, give you a, a different variety of size of rocks. Now I just put the rocks down into the scenic some scenic glue, and then I took some uh, black earth tone colors, mixed it in water, and colored up these rocks. Now I got some coarse ballast, and I put that also along one side of the the bank there, and then put in some foliage, this clump foliage, and also used this flock and turf light brown coarse uh, stuff there and put that in there all using on the scenic glue. Just fill it all in, spread it out, pour some on there, you know, get it to go where you want it to, then finish it off with uh, some uh, glue and water mix, spray it on and then I'm going to cover this with uh, you know, scenic glue and some of this turf and I'm, yeah I'm using a baby spoon here because well I don't have uh, babies anymore in the house my grandkids are a little bit older and they don't need the baby spoons anymore so spread that out get some turf down there as well add some color in there um, I don't want to put anything tall 
right here because the door is going to open over the top of it and just destroy whatever I put down in there. So I got to have something that's low lying and uh, kind of make it like a grassy area. And also cover up this top part here where the where it's on the door and kind of meld that scene into the lower part of the scene. And there you have it. This is all before you have the water put in. Now you can do it in a different order. You can put the water in, but I'd like to put the shore in there before the water gets there because uh, the water is going to mix over the top of your shoreline a little bit and you want that to work the best way. So using the realistic water I just poured it in there near the top. Now what I should have done is put in a little dam near the bottom of that before it goes down to the lower level so I could keep as much uh, realistic water at the top and so I could get a little bit of depth up in there. But uh, it started flowing down to the bottom there as you could tell but a majority of it stayed near the top because it was relatively flat. I spread it out with a little uh, stick from a tree that I used and also on the layout those little branches that you saw on the side of the stream and as you can see I put a little uh, a dam down there with some water effects and let that dry and you know put that right there that kept the water as much as possible near the top part of it when I did uh, multiple layers. I think I did probably th three layers of uh, water. Then I just cut out that dam when it was all done and just getting ready to put some more water effects in the other direction and that dam is going to be part of where the water flows over the side and it starts getting rough right in that area and so just fill it all in. And then once it's filled in, just spread it out with something like uh, this popsicle stick or some other little stick you may have or tool. And then it looks great. I also did that near the top of the other dam. And then I took some cotton ball, you know, out of a pill bottle, just spread out a little piece and put that near the bottom, make it kind of look like it's. Uh, rushing water and kind of foaming and spraying as it hits the bottom. Now I'll put in this bridge back in. And now it's time to glue down the track after I'm all done and put some weight on it. Well man cavians that's been part six of how to build my Helix Mountain. And uh, as you can tell I put a stream in and a little waterfall and everything else to go underneath the bridge that I had to put in so that it would look a little bit more realistic and um, I just had to kind of make it that way. It just looked a lot better and it was more challenging. You know, showed you how to seal it all up with uh, drywall, carving, plaster, uh, whatever you want to use really, and uh, to keep the water from dripping over the sides and edges and making a mess on your floor or anything else underneath your layout. Uh, put in all the grass and the foliages and painted it a few times to get the right colors and the right spots that I wanted it to look like and it's kind of make it look a little more realistic. Uh, put in all those little uh, effects there for water. You know, get the waterfall and some of the ripples in the, uh, in the stream. All those little pieces, you know, even covering up the, the crack at the bottom of the door so that it looks like you don't know that that is a door and it would actually open. Uh, that's the whole point. I'm trying to make it look seamless and uh, hidden. So, if you like what you saw here today, click down below and uh, even uh, hit that bell up there in the corner to uh, get notified when new videos come out. And when I get part 7 put together, you'll get notified on that. Also subscribe and uh, you also get notifications that way as well. So, as always Mancavians, happy model railroading. Stay off those tracks. Bye. So if you like what you saw here today, go ahead and click subscribe down here below or follow my Facebook, Google+, Twitter, and my Instagram links down here below in the comments. Also, click on one of my other links for videos as well. As always, Mancavians, happy model railroading. Stay off the tracks. Bye.